I'm Max Sterling, welcome to LARP Mix. Today I'm going to show you how to make something called hardtack. Now this has been around for a really long time. The Egyptians used it, it was used during the Crusades. It's been all around through history. The Civil War in the United States and it's still in use today in many places where uh, the terrain is hard and people just need a good survival type of food. So I'm going to show you how to make this and it's probably the easiest thing you've ever made in your life. It's flour, water, and salt, if you want salt. It could just be flour and water, so it's super simple to make. Now I'm gonna use blanched almond flour, but I would suggest probably just using regular flour if you wanna make this and have it last for a really long time. But if you know you're gonna be using it like over the weekend for your game, then you can use whatever kind of flour you want. You'll get mixed results, but your regular all-purpose flour is probably your best way to go. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make this. Like I said, it's super simple, but it's a very immersive food item for your game that you can make, and it fits any genre of game. You can use this as sort of like a Lembus substitute in a medieval type of game. You can use it in a medieval game as what it actually is. You can use it in a modern game or a survival or a zombie or horror game as a survival type of hardtack food. You can use it in a future game, post-apocalyptic games. I could see it being used in a dystopian future where there's not a lot of food. You have you know, very few items to work with, so you're just making this uh, to sort of fill your belly while you try to find your next meal. And really, like I said, any game genre, this food item will fit in, which is why I love it so much. And it's so simple to make, it's cheap to make, you can carry it around in your pocket. It's very forgiving. You don't have to refrigerate it or heat it or do anything with it. Um, unfortunately, it is pretty hard to eat, so it's something you probably want to dip in soup or maybe coffee or something if you have that, but if you really have to, you can just crunch it up and eat it. But just be very careful of your teeth because over time, it continues to get harder and harder as the moisture leaves it. So if you bite into something you've had laying around for a few weeks, it could be incredibly hard to eat. So just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, very simple to make. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this. So we have our flour, our water, and our salt. Notice there's not really any measurements involved here. Well, if you wanna talk measurements, they'll be in the description, but really, this is one you can just kind of do by feel. So we're gonna take some of this flour and put it on here. Then you're gonna go ahead and just add the water and we're just gonna add a little bit to start with and then mix it up. Now the less water you use the better because you just want this to be into a workable dough because you want all the water to evaporate. So now you could be done there or if you want you can add a little bit of salt. The salt's really just to give it flavor and if you're going to put these in a soup I would probably suggest that or if you don't want to carry salt on your person or if you know you're gonna want a little bit of seasoning, I would put that in here. Uh, that way you don't have to carry two separate items. But you can see how this is a nice dough. Now you can do this with your hands also if you want to. I'm just being childish. Now before you bake this, you can spray this uh, with some oil or rub some butter on it or whatever. But you don't wanna overdo it because you don't want anything in here that's gonna go bad. So maybe a little bit of oil. Now you're gonna roll this down to about 3 eighths of an inch metric will be in the description or basically 
you know, just get it to a point where it's not that thick, if that makes any sense to you. Now, if you're making this for yourself, be sure to wash your hands. If you're making this for others, well, you do what you want. Okay, now, ideally you cut into a square. And if you have enough, of course, you can make another one. Or if you're making a much larger portion and you fill in this entire sheet or something, then you're gonna have more. But basically, this is what you got. You can cut this into however many you want to. I'm gonna leave it probably just this size because I'm only making one. And then you just wanna find something to make holes with, uh, you know, screwdriver, paper clip, ice pick, whatever you can find. And this is just so it doesn't rise. You can also use a fork. That's it. Now we're gonna throw this in the oven and you can cook it either at a high temperature, say like 375 or 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes, flip it over, cook it again for about 30 minutes, or you can throw it in something like an air fryer uh, or you can cook it in a cast iron pan over a fire, but if you're doing it that way, you gotta really keep an eye on it, because what you're watching is, uh, you wanna make sure the moisture evaporates, so it's low and slow is the better way to go, but if you're in a hurry, you can do it at higher temperatures, but just for shorter times, but you have to keep an eye on it. I'm gonna do this in my air fryer. I'm probably gonna do 15 minutes on one side, flip it over, and do 15 minutes on the other side at 350 degrees. So let's go ahead, do that, and then have a look and see what they look like. All right, now if you did it right, you end up with something that looks like this. So I cooked this a little bit too long, so it's a little bit burnt on the edges. Like I said, you really have to watch them, but you want it to be really dry. So whenever you go to crack it, it's really sort of solid. And uh, you can see with this almond flour, it seems to be holding together okay. Now, if you were to eat this right now, it's kind of hard, but it's not so hard it breaks your teeth. So, you know, like I said, the longer you leave this sit, the drier it will become, and the lower and slower you cook it, the drier it will become. Now, you can use almond flour, like I said, you can use probably whatever flour you want to, you know, experiment with it if you care to, but all-purpose flour is to go to on this one. If you wanna experiment, I'd love to hear how it goes for you. Please comment below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and be sure to let all your friends know about this awesome channel I'm doing here. I try to make most of my videos cover multiple genres, so that way no matter what type of game you play, you have something that you can look forward to on my channel. And something like this hard tack, like I said, perfect. Even reenactors can use this, okay? If you're a medieval reenactor, Civil War reenactor, you can use this because this has been around forever. You might just wanna do a little bit of digging to find out what exactly they used as the components because I know there were different types of flowers used, but basically, this is it. You're just changing up the ingredients and you have an awesome little snack that you can use at any LARP. You can put this in bags and carry it around. You don't have to worry about it going bad. The only thing you kinda have to worry about is getting wet. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and of course, as always, adventure on. Need more salt.